This is Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano, and you are listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a very special impromptu edition of the BCP. Very excited to be here, guys. We're chilling tonight. Lots to talk about in the wrestling world. We're going to talk a lot of uh, letters here. MJF, H-I-A-C, here on the BCP. Lots to talk about, but please welcome in. You know her as the goodest sister. You, Gosh, I got to get the list out again. From Damage 365 promotion, she is a free agent. She works everywhere. We saw her working at Baltimore Celeb Fest. She is Maria Canales' personal protege. You know her for the BCP, the Popbreak.com, Kimmy Talks Wrestling. She's doing social media for the Popbreak. The list goes on and on. Uh, Elite POV. What else did I miss, Kimmy? Just everything. I guess I'm just everywhere. I mean, they're making posters for me now for conventions, so I guess I made it somehow. You did get a poster, and why don't we shamelessly plug as we do here on the BCP. Tell us a little bit about that convention. What's uh, Asylum, right? Yes, the the Asylum. My new friend at the Asylum. I'm going to pull up the information here because my other friend, Mae Valentine, actually just got announced for this convention about an hour ago. Yes, so August 20th, which is five days after my birthday, so we'll truly be celebrating. It is at, I'm going to butcher this so bad, it's at Paris Panty, New Jersey. Um, Gail Kim's going to be there. Um, I got to see who they announced compared to who they told me. Um, Arch Cassie's going to be there. Diesel's going to be there. I'm going to be there. I don't know who I'm working with yet. There's two possible names. But Ooh. yeah, come on down. We're really celebrating my 21st birthday. And like I said, I have a poster, so I guess I made it somehow. Wait, when's your birthday, Kimmy? Is that that day? It's, it's August 15th, but it's five, It's like birthday weekend. Happy almost birthday, Kimmy. Yeah. All right. Looking looking forward to Yo, that. We're three months away. All right. <laughs> we have time. Guys, share the stream if you're tuning in uh, late here on a Thursday night. Lots to talk about in the wrestling world. Kimmy and I are just hanging out, and we want to talk about MJF. Uh, we have a couple Hell in a Cell predictions for you, but we got some shameless promo out of the way. I want to get one more because we are brought to you today by Standalone Wrestling Women's Division. I am legend. That's going to be Saturday, a week from this Saturday. June 11th, that's going to be in Union, New Jersey, the Boys and Girls Club of Union County. Guys, get your tickets now on eventbrite.com. You can see the poster. We got Riley. We got the Vicious One. We have Adina. We have JC Storm. We have Brittany Blake and Casey Cattell. The list goes on and on. It's going to be a great show, guys. Get your tickets now. I'll be on the call. Shameless promo. Kimmy, where do we start? I feel like as journalists, we can't bury the lead here. The talk of the town. It's got to be the MJF promo, right? Is that where we're starting today? I, I guess so. I mean, that's what you told me before we went live. Yeah, you fair. said MJF, that's... and then I get to talk about Rollins for an hour, which is fantastic. There it is. I like, I respect it, Kimmy. Um, let's talk about it, guys. Um, we've heard a lot of people talking about this. And please weigh in on the chat. I was getting a lot of messages, um, not even just last night, but leading up to this. I, I know we were talking in our group chat. Kimmy, like, oh, what's going on behind the scenes? A double or nothing, these so-called flights. And at the end of the day, I just said, hey, look, if everyone could get on the same page, this could make for a great story. And I think, in my mind, that is exactly what happened. I always feel the best promos come from real life. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about if it's real or not. I don't think that's what we're here to do. I think we're here to be entertained. And and I think that's the most important part of wrestling. And I was very entertained last night by a very well-done promo pulling from a lot of reality everything from the the supposed countdown to the blackouts to the no mention of it um really adds to it i'm i'm one who always likes that fourth wall storytelling uh, i know a lot of people in the business and, and this isn't a knock are, are very set in their ways and i i feel and i keep saying this that the business has evolved in so many ways and and this is a perfect example uh, a lot of people are comparing it to cm punk promos um nunes had a great point he said this this is its own thing um, I'd be lying if I didn't say I, I did think about the the uh, promo by CM Punk, but this was something different and special. We're all talking about it, um, and it's something that I feel wrestling needed. Kimmy, what was your thoughts on this MJF promo that was absolutely stellar? So 
I'll just say that insider Kimmy was working very vicariously since Saturday at 9.15, literally hearing everything about this story. But if you want to hear that, you could tune in to the K Square Observer, where me and my pal Kyle Masters on the Elite POV Patreon, we go through all the rumors and regulations where I will be going in detail of this whole story. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So, so wait, wait, we don't get it on the BCP. You're, pl- you're plugging the Patreon exclusive for another. We don't, we don't get it here on the BCP. Listen, you said that as journalists that we're not here to tell the story. You said you said that I'm here to tell my opinion on the promo. All right, have it. Okay, I, I see how it is. All right, all right. I can sit here and tell the whole story. I could sit here and say that there was a flight book, and I knew exactly what flight it was. It was a red eye coming into Newark. Okay, it was going off at 11:30 Pacific time. I can say that. Kimmy, Kimmy, uh, Kimmy has some waiting. insiders here. Okay, okay. And I was waiting till like 2 a.m. to see if he got on the plane. And he didn't. You saw in our group chat. I was like, oh, my God, it's the friend scene. When ha, Ross, like, is, Ross is trying to make sure that he Rachel got off the plane. plane. <laughs> he did get he off, got the, off the plane. Listen, best show ever. No one can tell me otherwise. Who's your favorite? So who's the, your favorite on Friends? Oh, my God. So my best friend compares me to Ross because he says that all these terrible things happened in my life. And now I'm finally realizing my dream like Ross did. But Chandler's just too funny to like not like him. So I'll say Chandler. See, I got, I got Ross is my favorite. I literally am Ross in so many ways. Ross totally underrated though. Uh, That's a story for another day. But Kimmy, go on about MJF. What did you think as a fan, not as a journalist, as a fan enjoying wrestling, watching with Mister So Cool back at the the So Cool Complex compound? I was not. No, no. We were watching on two different floors. I was watching with Kyle and the Elite POV people. (laughs) Oh, there you go. I, I see how it is. A little factionism going on here. But what what did you think as a fan? Oh, so I knew that there was a meeting over breakfast and I was like, I wonder if this is going to go well. And right before the promo, I got a phone call that was like, you're going to want to tune into this promo. And I'm like, all right. So I muted everything and I tuned in for the eight minutes and 30 seconds, however long it was. And oh my God, (laughs) like the things that he said, like things I've heard, things that I knew he felt um it was just insane to think that i didn't watch wwe when punk did the pipe bomb that's when i was watching impact slash tna so i really didn't know what that felt like to be a fan watching cm punk cut that pipe bomb or even like people were comparing it to piper and i wasn't alive for that so this was like my first real pipe bomb and i was like damn there's some heat over here um i don't know what to believe anymore i know that mjf has been mad for months um i know that He's very good at working people. He kicked me at a meet and greet. So for those people that were online to meet him, there's pros and cons to meeting MJF at a meet and greet. But I'm excited to see what's next. I think they're going to take him off TV for a bit. I'm wondering if Tony's really going to make a statement about this because a lot of people are comparing this to Sasha and Naomi. And WWE did make a statement. So is AEW going to be different? Are they not going to make a statement? Are they going to say something? Is TK going to come out and be like, listen, MJF, who the hell do you think you are calling me a Mark when I'm the one who signs your paychecks every goddamn week? So I'm interested to see what happens next. Yeah, and great, great points, Kimmy, looking at it from all angles. Like Kimmy obviously has an in- insider, so a little intel on the situation. And again, guys, we're not here to talk about if this is real, if this is a shoot or work. I, this is not kind of show we really are. Um, but as a as a fan of the product, uh, and I had mentioned earlier in the week, I said if they are able to get on the same page, this could tell for a great story. And, and I think last night was a perfect example of that. And I was very entertained by it. We were talking about it. And it was it was the little things, Kimmy. It was the words he used. It was how... When he came out, they're, they're booing him out of the building. You know, everyone knows all the online, you know, rumors or whatever's real, what's not. And then minutes in, they're they're cheering him and, and his ability to turn the crowd like that. And we were obviously entertained and the little things from the production, the don't count me down, the, the censoring and, and then just fading to black, go to commercial, come back. It never happened. Uh, no mention of it on social media uh, from the official AEW, I thought that was very well done. I, I'm a fan of that fourth wall stuff. I'm a fan of that. Uh, I always kind of pitch ideas like that and as, as I'm growing in the indies here and, and maybe I'm thinking too big or overstepping, but I, I, I like stuff like that. To me, it was very, very entertaining. And there's so many ways you can go from this because, yeah, he had well, a lot of- Well, did you see what yeah. they did today? Go right ahead, please. Did you see what they did today? No, I was working all day. So they pulled him from the AEW active roster, and then they pulled down his Shop AEW merch account. 
Oh, see, so that the one that interests me because it is a business at the end of the day is the is the the merch poll at a time like that. That's that's where you get me. So the interesting thing about the merch. So the reason why Sasha and Naomi's merch was pulled is because they don't want WWE does not want them to get paid during the suspension because Correct. they because every superstar gets a merchandise cut depending on who you are. You get a bigger cut, the bigger star, the bigger cut you get. So for Vince, he's like, well, I don't want Sasha and Naomi making this extra. Jesus, I almost choked on. Ooh, that was you okay? Been really bad. We're not even talking about yeah. Rollins. Calm down. Yeah, you got. It. You need water or anything, Kimmy? You okay? No, I'm good. I'm not gonna die. So Sasha and Naomi, you know, they don't want Vince doesn't want them to make extra money. So now they're like, oh, if they did that, then we could do that too. So I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Especially if you're not gonna mention it and you're gonna tweet about how amazing the ratings were on AEW last night. You're not gonna mention that your star just like trashed you. Cool. Well, cool, it, Tony. I mean, I'm again. I'm of the mindset, and again, I don't know. You know, I always say in, in wrestling, as fans were entertained, as, as um, you know, people on social media, as, as fans, you know, we we think we know. As journalists, we think we know a little bit more. Um, you know, I know you have sources. At the end of the day, things change down to the minute, down to the wire. Uh, so at the end of the day, I always say we don't know. You know, I just kind of kind of read as an outsider looking in or, or from experience or interactions I've, I've had with certain people. Uh, my first interaction with MJF, uh, Boardwalk Beatdown, what, 2017, 2018, whatever it was. Uh, 18. Saw him, saw him after a match. He was actually brushing his teeth in, in the bathroom. And, and uh, you know, I said to him, hey, great match, man, like really entertaining. He just goes, I know. I'm like, oh, OK. Like, it's like that. Obviously, I, I grew to learn what, how MJF was, but he's always on uh, very entertaining. Uh, we're talking about it. And I just thought it was very, very well done for what it was. And, uh, you know, I was getting texts. But, oh, oh, Rob, you think this is real? And, you know, like, Rob, did you see that? And, da, da, da. and I'm just like, I'm like, it was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, made me very, very excited about wrestling. And, and I'm not even a, the biggest MJF guy, but I appreciate what he does. I think if this plays out right, and I said this to you in our group chat, Kimmy, everybody wins. This this could be money. Let's hope he gets his $4 million he's asking for. <laughs> maybe maybe he has he already. Or maybe terms are, were reached before. We, we shall certainly uh, see, but uh, as a fan, I, I always like be entered being entertained and what do you think of double or nothing over here at the bcp combat do you have a good time kimmy what do you think of the pay-per-view oh my god i felt like i was watching a combination of a wrestlemania because how long it was but it was like oh wait this is actually really good i was like where's like the bridge you know kyle said today on elite pov that pay-per-view should not be more than 10 matches and double or nothing was 13 and although we're very fortunate that here in the u.s like most of us had off the day after for memorial day but someone like kyle who lives in canada doesn't get off so can you imagine just like staying up till 1240 in the morning and then having to get up early to go to work or someone in like the UK or like another country having to like not be able to sleep as much because they had to stay up to watch the entire pay-per-view. And I know why from a business perspective, Tony does it on the weekends of holidays because everyone's like, oh, everyone's off. But pay-per-view was too long. I enjoyed some of the matches. Um, Daniel Garcia was the only person not to bleed in the anarchy of the arena, so hell yeah. And Britt won, so all is right in the world. All is right in the world. Yeah, again, I think uh, Britt Baker uh, paid you off. That's a conversation for another day. No, she did not. Uh, it was a tip, right? Is that is that what I heard? It was a tip for your... It was a $40 tip, just like Daniel Garcia gave me a $100 tip. Oh, look at you. And, you know, a very classy move by then. And all joking aside, I will say this. Kimmy... He's killing it right now. Free agent Kimmy did an excellent job at Baltimore Celeb Fest. Uh, was working with Sting. Did a stellar job. And I think you're working. Are you working with Johnny coming up? Our guy Johnny? It's in the works. Oh, it's in the works. I thought you posted something. So I apologize if I'm I did up. post it. Okay. No, I did post it. It's in the works. I apologize. It is like a 95%. No, it's a 95% chance yes. Well, I hope so. Tell but it. check on the... Check out August 6th, the, the Asylum's virtual signing with Johnny Gargano. Check it you out. Might see and me. shameless promo, one of our favorite interviews to date. Um, and thank you to Chad and Kimmy, everyone involved at Baltimore Sled Fest. Uh, was it Crazy 8, uh, Grade 8, Crazy 8, whatever the promoter was? Grade 8, 
great eight. They did a great job as well. Uh, thank you to everyone involved and Johnny Gargano for making time for the show. Guys, please check out our interview with Johnny Gargano. Uh, it's one of our favorites to date. Uh, really, really read as a love letter uh, from our guy Chris Nunes to, to one of his heroes, Johnny. And, and what a cool moment. I think that's why we do this. Um, and, and that's why we love wrestling. And, and definitely a lot of wrestlers have pulled us out of a dark place. And I know we've all, you know, it is Mental Health Awareness Month and we've all gone through stuff, man. And um, I know a lot of wrestlers on the indie level uh, have, have certainly been there for me and, and uh, a lot of my friends, and that includes you, Kimmy, and Bill, and everybody, Nooner, uh, the list goes on and on. I'm not going to name any more names, but just thank you guys. Uh, and everyone take care of each other. Like We always end the show with take care of each other. Uh, mental health is super important, and everyone just look out for each other, especially in this world and in this climate. So that being said, and, and, and welcome uh, David Gold in the chat. Here we, we we got the shameless promo in. Don't worry, we got the the shameless promo. Listen, in. I'm putting you over. I'm waiting for the details. Okay, I'm waiting okay. for the details. Maybe, maybe BCP, uh, maybe BCP will be there. We'll we'll make some calls. We'll see what we can do. But guys, thank you again. Any everyone at Baltimore Slab Fest, uh, love talking to Johnny and everyone there. Um, shameless promo aside, let's move on because Kimmy, I know that you. Wow, Chad's ears are ringing. Look at that. Um, uh, I know that you want to talk about. Not only Hell in a Cell, but you want to talk about your hero, Mr. Seth Rollins. Kimmy, the floor is yours. I'm so done. I'm Listen, I told this to Bill. What did I say to Bill the other day? I was like, my people just can't win anymore. You know, Daniel Garcia lost last night. Rollins is going to lose on Sunday. Rollins is never going to win a pay-per-view. I'm convinced he's never going to win a pay-per-view ever again. He's ever. just on a downward spiral. I just don't know what's happening. You know, I actually pitched this to Bill today. This is my new theory. Bray Wyatt's going to come out and help Seth Rollins win a hell of a cell. Really? That, are, are you just <laughs> grasping at straws here? Or? <laughs> no, I'm totally... Chad, you are my hero. No, Chad's I have my no hero, intel. first of all. But go ahead. Listen, I have no intel on Bray Wyatt. I just know that he's been tweeting some interesting things. But I just think, you know... It'd be interesting if he came back. I know that he was in talks with a lot of companies and WWE was one of them. I know that it's very frustrating as a Rollins fan right now to just kind of look at what he's doing and know that he was somebody who was a top guy and he just keeps on losing. And I understand like, oh, like Rollins can't win every match. I know he can't, but it, for a fan, how can I take Rollins seriously on TV if he's just going to continue to lose and to lose and to lose and to lose? Because look, he's going to be in that Money in the Bank ladder match probably. He's not going to win that. I don't know what he's doing at SummerSlam. I don't know what he's doing for the rest of the year. So I don't know. I would love for Rollins to win. It's not going to make sense. His promo on Monday was fantastic. And I don't care what you say about, and this isn't direct abuse to everybody. Like, I don't care. Whatever. It's like, oh, Rollins is so obnoxious with the suits or whatever. But Rollins, oh, thanks, Chad. <laughs> Rollins is just somebody that I definitely think needs a win in 2022. And I think that you could push Cody to the moon and you can make all, you can do all these things to make Cody feel special, but are you going to give him the titles or are you going to have Reigns sit at home for 10 weeks? Yeah. It's a great point you bring up, especially, you know, we, we love to support our favorites. Uh, I'll call it down the middle right now, Kimmy. I think, Rollins, a guy who who literally has done nearly everything in the business, now's a good time for him to kind of slow down and put over other talent, much like we saw uh, Daniel Bryan at the time doing a kind of low key, as you say, doing it where Seth doing it in, in a more. Did you use that right? Seth, uh, more in a, yeah, the high key. That's not the word. Okay. High key's not. The I apologize. Word. Um, but Seth doing no. Seth doing it in a more obvious way, taking a lot of L's, but putting people over. Now we have Cody versus Seth. Three. They're being very careful with Cody. If you think about it, he's probably only fought three people on the roster since he's come back. Correct me if I'm wrong, not counting house shows. Probably Miz, Seth, and somebody else, I'm sure. Uh, there was Kevin there Owens. was like the big tag match. Kevin oh. Owens. Yeah, there you go. Right. So a lot of moving parts here. I think there's it doesn't make sense, and I think you would agree with me, Kimmy, just from a storyline perspective, for Rollins to win here. Uh, not to say Cody needs that momentum. It would certainly be a curveball if Cody lost here, but I just don't I don't see the point of it. Rollins doesn't need to, and I hate to use the term get over, but Rollins doesn't need that momentum right now. Rollins is one of those guys, and I've said this on the show several times, and this is a guy who literally carried Raw on his back at one point. He's trained a lot of my yeah, friends. Um He's done a lot of big things. He could win gold at any one of those shield guys, as we've seen, have can win gold at any any minute. So I think it's not going to hurt Rollins. I think a loss would hurt Cody a lot here. I think the story for Cody is, as you brought up, Kimmy, it's going to be that 
close call to getting to be that number one contender. It's going to be, and this is Vax's idea, so I give him credit for this. He's going to either win that money in the bank and lose, or he's going to be so close to winning the money in the bank, or he's going to be the last one in the rumble. And I think that's going to be the money's in the chase for Cody. And I think that's going to be the story of Cody that endears us to him more um, because the issue with Roman having both belts and now not even being here uh, on vacation, whatever it is right now, is Oh, I think it's ridiculous. I truly think it's ridiculous. Go ahead. I think it's ridiculous because I understand that Reigns wants a vacation. That's fine. You could take a vacation, but you were carrying both titles. So now you're putting Raw and SmackDown in jeopardy. So what are they going to do? You have to remember the WWE demographic is different than the AEW demographic, where the WWE demographic is towards kids. So now Roman's gone this whole summer. What's the difference between what kids do in the summer and what kids do in the regular year? School. Kids are off from school. Yeah. So kids are going to go to more events that they could stay up late, but they don't have to wake up early the next day and attend school. So now you're taking your championships off of the live event. You're taking your championships off the two main shows. So what's driving your show? Yeah. Because you're not building anybody. And this is my problem with Hell in a Cell in general. You're not building anybody. That the main event is for two people. The only Hell in a Cell match, I might add, it's two people that this should not even be a match three. Because why does Cody need to win three straight in a row to go to Money in the Bank? Shouldn't Rollins have won at WrestleMania Backlash, have him cheat to win like Cody did at WrestleMania Backlash, and then lead to Hell in a Cell? Would that not have made more sense? Like, I don't understand. I also don't understand why this whole card is all Raw matches. There is not one SmackDown match on this card. Very good point. Why? It is stupid. If you knew Reigns was going to take this 10-week vacation, you should not have had him won the titles, and you should have done something with it because you you knew. There's no way that you didn't know that Reigns was going to be like, yeah, I want the whole summer off. It's it, Come on. it's very interesting, and I, I will say, Kimmy, you do bring up some great points. Also, bonus points to you from looking at taking your fandom out of it, especially for when it comes to Seth, and really looking at it from a business perspective. Uh, great job by you, Kimmy. You're absolutely killing it. She gives the thumbs down on this one. I don't feel they needed a, a three-part series, but it has been intriguing. It hasn't fallen flat. Uh, I, You know, Hell in a Cell for Cody makes sense, I guess. Uh, I don't know if Rollins needed to be the the opponent. Stellar promo, though. You have to give him that. Uh, your guy had a great promo on Monday. Of course he did. It was fantastic. I texted you all right after it happened. I was like, this is a great promo. And I quoted the entire promo. And I was like, please watch this video. And I did. And I did. And uh, Thank you. Great job. Yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about this, this pay-per-view, if I'm going to do everything I can to watch. And I'm sure I'll throw it on at some point. But uh, another match that really intrigued me, and guys in the chat, let us know who you have as well. Uh, Chad saying, I agree with Rob. I never get tired of hearing that. Um, Bubba Thanks, saying, no, in, no intercontin <laughs> intercontinental title. Excuse me, that's for sure. Um, so interesting stuff going on in the chat here, guys. Uh, please share the stream. Let us know who you got. Kimmy, Listen, another one. The IC title has not been defended since WrestleMania 37. Let's just be happy the U.S. title is being defended on this card. It is a miracle. Never thought we'd see the day. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, a match I'm very excited for. Uh, I don't know what you think about this one, Kimmy. Asuka, big time Bex. We've always been a very, very big Becky Lynch, pro Becky show since, man, she got called off from NXT. And, of course, what did I say? Asuka, Bianca, and Becky Lynch. That's everybody. And Bianca defending the Raw Women's Championship against two opponents, do you think the title is now more likely to change because statistically it is, or is this just another big dub for Bianca Belair? I'm curious as to why this has to be a triple threat. Um, I think this was the problem I actually had with Bianca winning at WrestleMania is that Becky's too big to keep her off TV, but you have nothing for Becky to do because unlike AEW, you don't have a mid-card women's championship. And now that it seems like they're getting rid of the women's tag team title, I think it's a perfect time to introduce that. So I wouldn't be shocked if Becky wins. I also would not be shocked if Asuka pins Becky so then Asuka and Bianca could feud to SummerSlam. But Bianca's probably going to win. This should be a good match. This feud's been really good. I think Becky's promos have been fantastic leading up to this. Um, I'm happy that Asuka's back, but I think the other problem is, too, is like the SmackDown Women's Championship isn't being defended because the SmackDown Women's roster has no one for Ronda Rousey to wrestle because Charlotte decided to go on her honeymoon, which is perfectly fine. But if you knew she was going to leave, you had to have someone to fill that void. And 
I don't know what Bailey's status is of if she's coming back anytime soon, but I think you need Bailey to come back to help elevate that women's division. Because how many times can I see Raquel versus Ronda on SmackDown? Wow, too many. Kim, Kimmy telling it. Uh, I don't want to say like it is, but uh, she's kind of kind of calling it down the middle here. Yeah, it's an interesting time. You know, you have a lot of your top stars leaving, taking vacation, and and you know. First of all, congratulations, Charlotte and Andrade. Uh, congrats, oh, you guys. Very. It looked like a beautiful wedding. Yeah. Did you see the pictures? It looked like a beautiful wedding. You know, I looked at some just for uh, some wrestling fashion. You know, got to got to stay on top of that. But um, oh, of course, of course, Me of course, and very important. Collins will never win. I, I get a there. It is. I get a lot of heat for that. Um, as you deserve it. Bianca retains here, Kimmy. That's what I have circled. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they go the other way, but I think, you know, especially with the news that just came out right before we filmed was that Lacey Evans is now being moved back to SmackDown, so they clearly have no idea what they're doing. But I think the biggest problem is, like, since Sasha and Naomi left, you really don't have – you need to fix your women's division, and I don't think they're doing that. So I'm going to go, Bianca. But I wouldn't be surprised if she loses. Yeah. I, but then I feel like that's stupid. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was an interesting call. And I know you always bring this up on the show about the women's tag team titles, how they're kind of hot potatoed or how sometimes they don't matter. Oh, boy, she's they getting Kimmy leave. Rage over here. I don't care anymore. They need to go. You, so you think they you need, have every You think this is the right call? They need to go? Yes. There is no reason for you to have them anymore. You don't have teams to have this quote unquote tournament that you're trying to plan, which has now actually been scrapped because they have no teams for this quote unquote tournament. I think that a second woman's title would benefit them greatly. Oh my God. Thank you for entering the chat. You just missed us talk about Rollins. Let me grab the chair there. Noons is coming. Yeah, grab the chair. Noons is coming in. We we live, by the way, brother. Um, but yeah, we're talking Hell in a Cell. I think Bianca retains here because, uh, again, they got – first of all, we know why there was a wrench in the original plans. You got that, brother. Check. Mike's coming in, Kimmy. We sound good over here? Sure. Yeah, my sure. picture Bianca as well. Yeah, I think I think okay. I think uh, Bianca retains here. It's going to be a really really good match. The triple threats can get a little tricky. It'd be cool to see Oscar win or Becky get the yeah, title. Yeah, I was back. about to say I would love to see Oscar win. But it's like you always say, bro. Like you don't, you know, it's like the title doesn't make the person kind of a thing. And all these women, they don't need the title. And, and yeah. I think it's going to be a great match. I'm excited for it. Is there anything else, uh, Miguel, in the chat? What's Miguel, up, Miguel? What's up, Miguel? Hope, hope you're healing up. Yeah, man. I was about to say. I hope your foot's doing better. Johnny says hi. Yeah, nice. Um, is there any other we don't need to do all the predictions or anything but are there any matches on this card that really stand out to you Kimmy that, that you want to go over we're not going to talk about Judgment Day uh, good, yeah the, you, the, the six six person match right how are we not going to talk about Judgment Day let's do it the, the new flavor of ice cream in the WWE <laughs> we have Judgment Day versus Liv Morgan AJ Styles and Finn Balor so this is interesting because if you remember our WrestleMania predictions, I said that I didn't like that Edge keeps on leaving and coming back, but Edge has actually stayed. I've been really impressed that Edge, deci Edge decided to stay. Thank God. So I like what they're doing. I definitely think that Judgment Day needs some gold if they're really going to capitalize, or should I say House of Black 2.0, because, you know, Rhea Ripley and Buddy Matthews are, are you know, dating in real life. So you choose what you want to do with that information. So Give me I definitely today. think that Judgment Listen, I'm very angry about this card. It's just <laughs> so you're blind. angry about every WWE card. <laughs> I was okay with WrestleMania. No, no, I no, okay no, not yet. R WrestleMania. This was actually one of the better WrestleManias of like the past few years. It was actually very, very good. What's up, Bubba? Like, like I was, like I was okay with that. This, I'm like, what the hell are you doing, Vince? So I think the heels are going to win, and then Rhea Ripley is going to be the next person to challenge whoever's going to win that woman's triple threat. Yeah, interesting. And, then win. and and remind us of the match. So it's Judgment Day versus the essential not Liv Bullet Morgan. Club would live. Yeah. Yeah. Bullet Club for life. Come on. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, oh, this could be a squash or whatever. This could be a really, really fun match. I, I was about to say, I'm actually, I mean, you, you talk about being extreme by, uh, intrigued by Judgment Day. I actually like the duo of Balor and AJ Styles, and I also like Liv thrown into the mix. Okay, I actually think that's very interesting. Obviously, they're, they're kind of put together for this match, so it's not going to last. Like, the union's not going to last long. But I do like the pairing of Styles and Balor. I want to see where they go with that. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do, like, a tag title chase with, you know, because Styles was a tag champion for the better part of last year, right? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So I would love that, though. 
Yeah, Styles you can win gold at any time. Yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll no matter where AJ Styles is on the card, I will always watch him. Yeah. Hey. Of course, he's great. We love him. Yeah. Hey, I know we're jumping all over here. Um, we obviously led with with the MJF promo. I didn't really see you last night. We were kind of texting about it, man. Yeah. Um, just your overall thoughts on it. I mean, I guess as a fan, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into like, is it real? Is it not real? Or whatever. I, I, uh, well, like I like I was saying, it it it. it Everybody's kind of comparing it to, you know, the punk promo from 2011. And I kind of, they're calling it like the pipe bomb 2002. I mean, 2022. I just, I think each, each thing is kind of its own thing. I agree. Like I wouldn't compare it. Like it's two completely different situations. Uh, uh, like we, uh, Vinny tagged this in a, in a Facebook post. Oh yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, uh, I loved MGF's delivery. It's one of the best promos I've seen in a long time. I love the fire. I love the passion. Um, I love when the line is blurred, whether it's real or not. I mean, obviously, going out on TV, I would assume that things would have to be approved of before things were said. When he, the, my kind of tell was when he did the, you know, like the mics cut. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 like that to me. Um, but he uh, said the f word. You can get sued for that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sure it was discussed. Because also, too, when he yeah. when he said when he dropped the f bomb and all of a sudden it was censored, it was like, how do you know it was going to be censored then? Um, because there's a 0. 0.7 there second a delay, delay between but when still, you say something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, but still, he keeps then, you on your toes. Yeah, for sure, you're not wrong. Um, a lot of things that MJF said, I, I've said it. He's been one of the best things in wrestling for the past couple of years. Best bad guy, best heel, whatever you want to call it in in, in wrestling right now. Um, I love the line where he says, uh, I'm one of the few guys that can make you feel something Stood out to me and well. I don't have to do much to get you there. Just little nuggets like that. in that promo was very like, it just, it made you think, um, over overall, I like it. I, my thing is I'm wondering where this is going. This is definitely puts more, adds more layers to MJF. It, it, it adds more to AEW. It gets everybody talking. Everybody's a buzz. This is probably going to be in the news for a while. Um, I wonder where this goes, though. That's uh, again, I, like I always tell Rob, and I say, I always say, what's next? You know, what's the next thing? Um, I wonder where this goes, but uh, I like where this is heading. Just you know, we'll see where this goes in the future. We're we're talking about it. Very well said, man. And I, and I appreciate your opinion on that. We were we were texting last night, like, oh, did you see it? So we're all talking about. It. Very excited to see uh, where it goes and how it yeah. plays off. Uh, something else that I, I do want to talk about, uh, Kimmy. I don't know how you feel about this. We we talked a little bit on our predictions pod for Double or Nothing, uh, Nunes and I, and I think Kimmy. We were all on the same page. The three of us kind of talk. Page, no pun intended. YouTuber hand, YouTuber hand. Focus. Um, no pun intended. Hashtag that's pun disputed. Hangman Page kind of being the champion. Um, us not necessarily connecting. Having what a six month title reign. I I was very uh, preachy about the fact that Hangman should win this match. He needed this win. Um, and I did not hate the booking. Spoiler alert: that CM Punk won the AEW title. Did not hate it. Again, notoriously not a CM Punk guy. I thought it was a great booking. I thought it was a great decision. I think it was a great business decision and i already see people saying who's punk gonna fight next who's gonna and, yeah. and you know you know not counting obviously the forbidden door i should say who is punk going to defend the title against next um so Nunes, what did you think about the booking of punk winning the title and who do you think would be on deck to fight him not forbidden door but for the title uh i mean like you said at the end of the day it makes good business this business sense uh punk coming back last year is really, you know, I've been a wrestling fan for most of my life. It really was, and it wasn't even announced. It was one of those things that it's in Chicago. It was the worst kept secret. You didn't know it was going to happen, but you kind of knew it was going to happen. Um, seven years away from the ring. And uh, I, I'm i a little sad for Hangman. I feel like I could tell. M maybe I... It, I was disappointed, but not that Punk won. It's just like, I, I feel like Hangman maybe could have hung on for the title a little bit longer. Maybe lose it at the next pay-per-view to Punk. Make this a multi-match feud type of thing. Um, I wonder where Hangman goes from here. Um, I, I hope he still stays in the upper mid card. If not, sh be the next challenger for the cha championship. I know they don't do the automatic uh, rematches now. Um, Which I'm okay with, that. Honestly... 
with with him making his return, long overdue, I, I think Miro would probably be next in line. I would I would love to see a feud like that. We didn't see that in, in WWE with Rusev and Punk. Um so I could see Miro maybe challenging for it. Um I don't hate it. Hmm. I mean, that's all I can really think of right now. Yeah, a lot of people, and we've said it on the last show, MJF is, is next in line to win that title. But I think with everything going on, this this will play out into some sort of storyline. Or yeah. f- and, and again, it's not even like, who's he going to fight? Which, again, yeah. makes it very interesting, very fourth wall breaking. Who, who do you guys think? Who do you yeah, think? Yeah, Kimmy, I, what did you think about Punk winning? And, and who do you think on deck? I was so mad that my insider was wrong. God damn it. Hey, things change. Yeah, I told you, things Kimmy, change. Kimmy, like we always tell you, you can't win them all. I know, right? Unbelievable. I know you want to win so, them all, but you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Hangman. Sorry. Yeah, athlete... I can't. That was. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Leave. Leave. Show anyway. Yes. So, can we take over? Let's go. So, for a business perspective, it definitely makes sense yeah. because, as MJF alluded to, there was so many execs from Water Discovery there last night and who's going to give you a big draw name to make sure that you're tuning in every week and you have to remember when Tony Khan first pitched AEW, two people he said, he's like, I could definitely get you Chris Jericho and it's going to take a while, but I could definitely get you CM Punk. Oh wow, that was in the pitch. And he did that. Yes, it was in the pitch. Wow. And he did that. So what's the best, and remember Jericho was the first champion so that's yeah. how you get people to watch is you get some you get somebody that everybody knows that was from WWE to help you gain a following and now that they're renegotiating their tv deal to try to extend it's the same thing of who's going to be that big name and unfortunately adam page is there yet like cm punk who's been around for 20 plus years i thought the match was okay i think punk was very sloppy he was very sloppy in his match last night so i just hope he's okay you um he tried it to bunk shot Larry twice a double or nothing. I know. He tried to bunk shot Larry twice a double or nothing. He fell both times. He tried something on the top rope again last night and he fell. It's a hard so move to execute. To, he needs to avoid ropes. He can't go on the top rope. He can't he needs to avoid ropes for the foreseeable future. I'm very excited for his match against Tanahashi at Forbidden Door. Yes. I think it should be really good. Who I think is next? I was also gonna say Miro, but I think Brian Danielson yeah. makes the most sense. I was about to say that, that would have probably been next. It, it kind of writes itself. Like, I wonder how you get Give there. Him 60 minutes. With, Give him 60 minutes and let him go. I, I wonder how you get there with him being with like the the bullet, uh, what, what, um, combat club and, and the whole. And now they're, they're setting up for blood and guts. But uh, that does make sense, though. You called that regal spot, by the way. You called that. Oh, I mean, I mean, you can't say war games. Obviously, I, 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 but, I still you know. like your idea of it. Go, what? Yeah, well, uh, 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 actually, no, 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 no. That would have been a good spot, but I loved it. Um, anything you guys well, before we get out of here? Anything else, else you guys want to touch on from Hell in a Cell? Anything going on in AEW? I think we hit the bullet points. MJF. Uh, we have, of course, the the women's match for Hell in a Cell. We talked Cody and Seth. Uh, we talked CM Punk. Anything else you got, Kimmy, for us? Um, you want- I just hope Thunder Rose is okay. Oh, yeah, is, is she good? What do we got? I've heard multiple things. I've heard not to listen to one thing. I've known that she's been a little frustrated, so I'm just going to say that I I hope she's okay. I hope, uh, and we love Thunder Rosa. We hope she's doing well. We hope that she's healthy. Uh, we are appreciative of, of her for all she does for indie wrestling, women's wrestling, and wrestling as a whole. And she will be making her busted open debut. Is that what you're going to say? No, tomorrow. I mean, I, I was going to plug tomorrow night. Hell of a TNT title match with Dante Martin and Scorpio Sky. Ooh, I'm real, very excited for that. The real winners, the fans, but probably Scorpio Sky. But it's going to be a great match. A hell love match, seeing though. love seeing Dante, and he will one day hold that title, uh, no doubt. My he mind. will hold gold. He will absolutely. Hey, Kimmy, you know the deal. We do a little something called Shameless Promo here on the BCP. She's about 95 percent working with Johnny. We'll we'll find out. Uh, but Kimmy, what do you got going on? Listen, the promoter basically said 95%. So at least me and him are on the same page. Uh, so let's I don't see. know. There's Order that 5%. Here. It's kind of scary. Yeah, that 5%, you know. So first of all, I'll plug Warriors of Wrestling next week wow. at Fun Station. What? That's first. No, wow. no. Wow is okay. Warriors of Wrestling. No, wow. Wow. Oh, I thought you were. No, 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 no. We, no. we think we're funny. No, we no, no. Okay. 
So Warriors Wrestling next week. Uh, Santana Garrett will be there. Scotty Suhati will be there, amongst others. So check it out. If is, is Persia on that one? She's not wrestling, but she will be oh, there okay. for meeting. You, you need to do the worm with Scotty. I'm just throwing that out there. I will not. I will not. Wow. I'm just going to be there and be like, okay, cool. So that's one. I obviously write from no poprate.com. <laughs> what is she? That's what I do. <laughs> yes. So no, she likes red I write from poprate.com. I do. Did I mention he was the only one not to bleed in the uh, arena in an anarchy that. match? I think he's he's invincible. He's indestructible. So I obviously work for, he is. I obviously work for the top I'm also at some point becoming the social media editor. I gotta talk to Bill about this. Um, so check out articles. I think I'm writing my Hell in a Cell predictions. I think I told Bill I was gonna do that. So yay. What else do I do? Um, Icons of Wrestling. I can't announce the big guest I'm working with because they have yet to be announced. But I can say that Chelsea Green and Penelope Ford, I will tell you off the air. Um, Chelsea Green and Penelope Ford are the two guests with the vendor that has been announced. Athena also just got announced as well. Wow. Sean Spears got announced too. Jamie Hager is going to be there. So this is so stacked. August 6th, right before my birthday. Make sure to come out to that. Wrestle Bash we talked about a little bit before. Like I said, I'm either working with Orange Cassidy or Kevin Nash, and that's the weekend right after my birthday. So come celebrate my 21st birthday. You know, we're going to hype up. Um, I do other things that I can't think of right now, so let's just leave it at that. Hey, all good. I'm here. Kimmy, thanks. I'm here monthly yelling at people. Usually me. Uh, Kimmy, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on uh, this impromptu po- podcast. I'm glad we were able to do it. And you ready to get out of here, bro? Yeah, and if anybody's going to be at the AC Beer Fest this weekend, I will be there. I will be there Saturday. That's so it. come say hi. Ooh. Come say hi to Come say hi and, and watch uh, Thrice and uh, Bayside. He charges for pictures. Just watch uh, it. All right, guys. I pay you to take a picture. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. All right, guys. Like we always say here on the BCP, everyone stay safe, stay positive, take care of each other. We out. Peace.